All right, welcome, welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name's Elliot and you're watching Rickety Ski Reviews. Today, we're gonna be back on the Ski Essentials train of watching their videos in the 100 millimeter width and seeing how their reviews compare to mine. But it turns out each of these sections is really long. The whole video is like huge. So reacting to the whole thing in one sitting, not realistic, but we're gonna go ski by ski and I'm just gonna kind of pick the skis that I've skied on and can give my experience and kind of compare it to their review. Now, in general, I typically really like Ski Essentials. I think they do a great job. They tend to be a little bit more positive than I would be, or maybe not positive. They just don't tend to talk about the negatives because they actually sell the skis. They're not gonna go out and say like, oh, this ski stinks because they still, at the end of the day, are selling the ski so they tend to be a little bit more rosy about things but everything they say in the positives I feel like is really accurate I feel like they're pretty honest about everything they're saying as far as characteristics of the ski so while they're not overtly negative I don't feel like I've ever heard them say anything that wasn't true either but that all being said let's jump right into it and talk about the k2 mindbender now the k2 mindbender was actually kind of a surprising ski for me I reviewed it at Mount Hood this summer I got it from the demo shop and I was floored by the ski. I was actually a little nervous because I haven't skied K2 and didn't know much about it. And it's the ski that Zach bought for this coming year. So we were recording together and I'm going, oh God, if I hate this, this is gonna be an awkward ride back. But you know what? Honesty is the policy. But actually, I really like the K2 Mindbender. It was kind of the most surprising ski of the year as far as skis that I really like. K2 in the past, I didn't know much about and they didn't really have like a great reputation for quality control. Now it seems like they've got that all locked down. They're selling their skis for very inexpensive relative to everyone else. And it seems like they're just trying to get the skis in everyone's hands. As far as the first impressions, when you look at them, they're kind ugly like I don't really love that gold mustard color but you know what like skis get snow covered on them I hardly even notice the top sheets of my skis as far as how the k2 mindbender skied the ski is phenomenal I mean it really once you lock in that turn rails through it's kind of what I would call almost like a crud cutter where it's like a heavy ski that once it locks into the turn kind of carries you the whole way through similar to like a vocal mantra or to less extent, a Fisher Ranger kind of does that. But just like once you get your turn locked in, it'll kind of sink in and cut through everything. I was there at Mount Hood in the morning when it was icy and then as you get down farther where it's warmer, it'll be kind of soft in all conditions this K2 thrived. So I was really impressed with the width, with the turning, with how easy it was to kind of make sloshed out turns and make kind of quick, small mogul turns. All in all, I really like this ski. I think I gave it like an 8.5 out of 10. It can get a little locked into its turns. Like that's a perk when you're trying to get through adverse conditions, but it can also be a downside when you're kind of on good conditions. So if you're on the groomers, being overly locked into your turns can make it so you don't have a ton of like different turn radius flexibility if that makes sense. It makes it so that if you want to adjust your turn midway through, you kind of have to finish out your turn and get to the next one before you can change a turn's shape. Now that's not a big deal. Overall, I really like it. It also can feel a little chunky. It's definitely a heavier ski. It's a little bit wider. You really have to be a strong skier to kind of get it edge to edge. Take that for what it's worth. It feels kind of like a beefy ski. The bite of the turn was kind of more towards the middle, not all the way in the middle like the vocal mantra, but kind of in that midsection, almost like the QST as far as bite location wise. But overall, I was really surprised by these skis. I felt like I could make some really beautiful turns on them. I liked the way they locked in and I was blown away because I for years have skied at Mount Hood. I've seen all different conditions there and these skis did a great job of being able to kind of get through any condition I needed. So if you're somebody who gets bad weather, which is like everyone, or if you ever get kind of like sloppy snow in the spring or you've got kind of um, chattery snow in the Pacific Northwest, you might really like this ski. But anyway, that's enough of what I think. Let's see what Ski Essentials think. Thanks. And here we go. Um, next ski up here is the K2 Mindbender 99 Ti. We actually just did a full review of this ski. So if you want to listen to Emily and I talk about it for like 24 minutes, we just put that up last week. So you can take a look at that. Um, K2 retained pretty much all the concepts of this ski from like a, a broad perspective. They just tweaked it and in my opinion, made it a little bit better. So one of those skis that's kind of right in the middle of the road um, in overall performance and also in weight, very, very versatile, kind of going back to like skis like the Ranger 102, um, Declivity 102, Enforcer 100, stuff like that, where you can just pick it up and take yeah. it to the mountain knowing that it's gonna do what you need it to do. Just about 2,000 grams exactly in this ski. I. I agree with that. I think that any day you had the K2 Mindbender, it's going to be good. Almost. 
I think that there are a few days, and maybe this is true where he's at in Stowe, Vermont, it probably is any day gonna be good. They don't get enough powder that really it's gonna, you're gonna feel a lot of sinking, or at least they don't tend to. Nine out of 10 days, the K2 Mine Bender probably is a great ski. I mean, same, I said the same thing for the Fisher Ranger. I bet that's a great ski for Vermont. With the K2 Mine Bender, if you're out west, like Idaho, Utah, Colorado, there probably are some powder days where you're gonna sink right to the bottom and it wouldn't be my first choice. It's got some width to kind of counteract that, but I would say that this is more like if you're carving and you wanna be able to get on edge and cut through things, that's what this ski is for. But I wouldn't say every single day I would wanna be on this. In the past few years since this ski came up or came out, um, I, really, I really drew a lot of similarities between it and the Enforcer 100. It really felt like they, they were right in the same category, very similar application, very similar performance. I do think with this new version, thanks to some longer tail rocker, it's starting. Yeah, I would say this is very different from the Enforcer, just in the fact that like, the Enforcer kind of wants to be loaded in the front and then just thrown. It doesn't really like to snap you out of the turns or load at the end of the turn. And we'll talk about the Norwegian Enforcer later. I know we're working towards it. But with the K2 Mindbender, when you load it up, it'll actually take its energy and it'll give you back that energy at the end of the turn. Um, so I would say that it's, if you're somebody who's really particular about your carving, I would actually argue that the K2 Mindbender feels very different with the turn in that it's gonna let you load up the turn when you flex your boot. It's gonna take that energy, put it into the ski, and then you can kind of snap out of that and take that turn into your next turn. The K2 Mindbender, I think, does a much better job of that. Nordic Enforcer maybe cuts through things a little bit differently because I didn't like the Nordic Enforcer and I really like the K2 Mindbender. So, you know, if you don't like the Nordic Enforcer, I wouldn't rule the K2 Mindbender out. To lean closer to like Justice or Stance 102, all those skis with more tail rocker but still metal in their construction. Yeah. So there's more free ride influence in its shape and also how it skis. So that's mostly, mostly noticeable in how it releases its tail edge, easier to kind of pivot and slash turns on it, uh, but it's still, it's still a precise ski, you know, the way that K2 positions the metal through the forebody along the edge, and then with a pretty strong flex pattern, you can still lay into this thing and give it all of your skier input yeah. and all of your power, and it'll respond well, much like an Enforcer 100 would. Yeah, that's true. Other than the Nordic Enforcer part, I don't think it does as good of a job as the K2 Mind Mender. But again, just we have very different ski styles. I don't think they're saying anything wrong. I think just the Nordic Enforcer rewards a certain type of ski style that I don't really use, where it's more throwing your turns and then letting them edge. And on the East Coast, people do just ski that way more, just because you're more concerned with getting your edges in, whereas on the West Coast, or at least Idaho and Utah, you're kind of feathering your turns more. As far as everything else he's saying, it's spot on. It definitely like makes clean little slurring turns. It rails. The one downside that he's kind of saying, if you're reading between the lines, at least the way I am, or the way I'm interpreting what he's saying, is that the downside is the K2 Mindbender can feel a little sluggish. If you're loading up the turn and want to just kind of adjust the turn based on a new terrain that you see, it doesn't really like that, and it can feel a little bit sluggish in some of the turns. But if you're somebody who can really look ahead, load up the ski, and just get a clean turn all the way through, then you'll really like it. But, that, you know, that is a downside. <laughs> We're gonna talk about the good, but we're also gonna talk about the bad. That's why we're here. So let's keep going. Yeah, I think that they've they've taken a little bit of that on-trail personality of the outgoing 99 Ti. Uh, you know, they've shortened that effective edge in this by yep, more adding tapered. the tail rocker and just made it a little bit more drifty. Yeah, uh, which I think is I, it's the right thing. To do. I think it's the right thing to do. You know, they went to the full sidewall. You know, there's just a couple of small tweaks that really kind of add up to. Uh, you know, not a wholesale change, not but like certainly big changes, but noticeable changes. Yeah, they're noticeable for sure. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think that from like a friendliness perspective, this is a this is a better choice than yes. the outgoing model. And I think it feels more like a K2 is supposed to. And there's probably a K2 engineering wa a K2 engineer watching this video <laughs> right now, being like, "You don't get to decide what my skis feel like." Right. But you know what else I would say too? After having skied this summer on the K2 Mindbender and the K2 Reckoner. 
I haven't skied the old version of the K2 Mindbender, but it felt like there was a little bit of that DNA from the Reckoner over to the Mindbender. Just something about the way when you slarve a turn, which is basically like washing out a turn. If you think about like little quick pull plant turns, that's kind of almost like a mini slarve turn. When I was kind of washing out my turns just to make quick, you know, short radius turns, I noticed that it kind of had some similarities to the Reckoner. I think that it also kind of sets and rails and offsets what the Reckoner does. Like if you were on the Reckoner and you're doing freestyle and you're doing trees, then ski makes a lot of sense. But if you wanted to do the mind bender and just kind of rail through and carve turns, you could have both skis and cover a lot of what most people are looking for or want. So I think that was really intentional, but I do feel like it has some more, they use playful a lot. It just means like you can make kind of quick little fun turns. It's not like super serious where like race turns where you're setting the edge, carving through. Playful is just kind of like little swashed out turns. Maybe you're in the trees doing stuff like that. I would agree that it did a surprisingly good job at short radius turns. I was really kind of shocked by that after setting those GS railing turns. It's not as good as some of the other skis like a QST, but it has some of that. So just so you know what features you're getting, you're getting a good on rails carving ski and that's kind of its primary focus, but you're also getting something that's wide enough and kind of quick enough edge to edge that you could take it in the trees and have some fun. The brand has a certain perception or, or we as skiers perceive K2, uh, you know, through a certain lens yeah. and and I think that lens is is playfulness and kind of more I mean I think the lens that a lot of us see K2 is like oh they're still making skis <laughs> unfortunately they went on like such a long hiatus from a lot of their skis or a lot of the skis they had were kind of geared towards middle-aged men for a while like while I was racing they totally exited the circuit so yeah more recently they have a reputation but I don't know, K2 has a weird reputation where it's almost like this corpse that's been dug up but now makes really nice skis. I don't know, the perception around K2, at least in my mind, is pretty mixed. More, more of a free ridey brand. Yeah. And I think this ski aligns more to how, at least I think about the company. Yeah, and I wonder if some of that freestyle reputation comes from just their history with like Johnny Mosley and things like that. Anyway, I'll stop pause, let's keep going. <laughs> No, I think it's a. I think the improvements are, are worthwhile. You know, that old one was a little bit more Cadillac style in terms of just setting that edge and letting it ride. Yep. Uh, this one is just a little bit more able to break that trend and, you know, free the edges and let it drift and smear around while still having that same, you know, the density of the ski. I mean, it was, yes. it's always a pretty heavy ski. Yep. Um, but having that density and stability has not gone anywhere. It's just a slightly different feel underfoot. Yep. Yeah, great ski. Yeah, I mean, in some of that beefiness, you do feel like, you know, you talked about being the Cadillac of skis. It definitely still feels beefy. At least when you look at the like larger spectrum of skis. It has some of that playfulness, but it's not its primary job. And especially after going on the Reckoner and the K2 Mindbender on the same day, it's like, okay, this is what playful feels like. This is setting an edge and railing through it the whole way. But yeah, I mean, I don't know the version they're talking about before, but I was very, very pleasantly surprised by the K2 Mindbender. I had not skied K2 in a very long time, if almost ever, in my career. I didn't really know what to expect going into it, and I was really, really impressed by them. They carved really well, they set an edge really well, they cut through a ton of different conditions in one day all at once. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with their assessment though. I think that it's kind of a surprising ski, especially when you look at price and everything. So as far as the K2 Mindbender is concerned, I agree with their assessment. I think they were spot on. I wish they talked a little bit more just about the beefiness of it, how it kind of sinks in and set the carving, and it feels good when you do it right, but it can feel kind of cumbersome if you're not doing it right, or if you're not somebody who likes that kind of beefy ski, you may not enjoy it. It. But again, maybe that tiptoes too negative and that's why they avoid it. Overall, great review. I thought everything they were saying was right on the money. Yeah, two thumbs up. When I start to think about like where the K2 Mindbender exists in my mind for skiers, I think it kind of falls into that category of crud cutter where it's a really good ski for people who want to kind of be able to get through any condition, specifically if you're in the Pacific Northwest, things like that. I think that where the ski exists is kind of in this beefy, chunky section when I think about the East Coast in the spring or I think about the Pacific Northwest most of the year. I think this ski is for somebody who likes to carve, who likes to set an edge and kind of rail the whole way through. So if you like this kind of content, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps my channel out a lot, but more than anything, just thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's been fun making these videos. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.
See ya.